We're here today in the home of Frank Gill and Brandon Bora, Byron, Georgia. We're so thankful that they opened their house to us to film this interview that I'm having with Jackie White. I guess Jacqueline Weldon White is, if the, you is the formal name, but I know her as Jackie. So we're here and I want to talk about, we're going to get to it, your new book, The Champion That Never Was, but I want to talk about your career because you have a varied career occupationally. You could say that. Because you were in police work. I was a police officer for six years, uh, from patrolman to homicide investigator. Which has served you well in your, because you have written uh, a murder mystery. Uh, I have. That was Mockingbird in the Moonlight. Right, set in Macon. Set in Macon. And you also did a, a true story about Anjette Lyles. I've actually done two true crimes. Yeah. Uh, and the empty nursery. And the empty nursery. Which is my favorite book. I always tell you that. It just is. But those were true stories. The, the story of the book, The Champion That Never Was, is a true story. You also have done other people's Other bi biographies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you do everything. You, you know, novel, mystery, you know, true crime, you know, biography, a, or whatever you call it. I think it's adult ADD. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's <laughs> adult talent, I think is the way we oh, call you're it. You're very kind. But uh, you're probably best known for Whisper to the Black Candle, which was your first book. It was. And you had been a police officer, and then you just decided to write a book. Well, I'd been a police <laughs> officer, and then I, I was like with that. the court system <laughs> for a long time, uh, juvenile court. I'd written other things. I, I've written all my life, and I had written uh, a number of articles for local and regional magazines mm -hmm. and newspapers. And uh, someone suggested writing a book about Anjette Lyles, uh, who was a notorious murderer in Macon, Georgia in the 50s. And uh, it just kind of came together. And, and, and still, people are fascinated by that book. It still sells. Yeah. And there was a, a TV series that incorporated, not made were, from that book, but incorporated that book in the series, so to There speak. actually were two. A&E okay. uh, did a City Confidential That's the one I was thinking based about, on, yes. on uh, Whisper to the Black Candle. And then uh, Discovery Investigation, uh, two years ago, included the Anjette Lyles case in uh, something they called Deadly Women. Well, she was. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. But now, this, this book you did uh, at the behest of the Stribling family. Yes. How did they say, hmm, Jackie White, I bet she'd be great to write well, this book. Well, a, a gentleman named uh, James Bryant, who was with Mercer University, had been researching this, this book for about 10 years, and he passed away very suddenly. They wanted the book done, his widow wanted the book done, and they approached Mercer University Press and asked for recommendations, and Mercer recommended me, and we came to a, an agreement, and uh, this is the result. This is the result. Yeah, I, I know James Bryant, is that his dude mm -hmm. you said? He had done a lot of research, but then you did a lot of research on top of his research. Well, I kind of had to research his research. Yes. Because I... I had, uh, when I started, just great big boxes of, uh, of files. He had done a tremendous amount of research, and I, in turn, had to go through that. I remember you telling me that they were just, you know... Took over the were, guest room. <laughs> yeah, just boxes on top of boxes on top of boxes, which just and blows my mind how you would do that. It, to me, it was, it was kind of strange to be approached to write a, a story about a boxer. Uh, when they asked me about it, I, you know, you do know that I don't know anything about boxing. Uh, <laughs> I would have said the same thing. But it turned out to be such a fascinating story. The boxing is kind of the, the vehicle, mm -hmm. I suppose, but the story's fascinating. In this book, you run into everybody from uh, Jack Dempsey and the Prince of Wales to Al Capone. Absolutely. And W.C. Fields. It's just, it's amazing what he well, did. And, and it's a, as you write it, it's a very personal story. You know, you, well, you get to know the people. 
It's not just, well then, you know, well let's 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 stop and, and say who the book is about. Just Certainly. give some background. Uh, it's about a man named uh, William Lawrence Stribling Jr. Uh, he was born to parents from uh, Bainbridge, Georgia, who very uncharacteristically uh, in 1907 took him and his younger brother and became acrobats in vaudeville and they toured for about 10 years all over the world. Uh, the children, they had started training the children as acrobats as young as, as six months old. They bragged that the babies could, when they were tiny, could hold on to their fingers and they could lift them completely off the bed and the baby would support his own weight. Um, and you have pictures in here of, of mm -hmm. him, the, him being, them being held and balancing in their father's hands. Standing. And, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and they settled in Macon and his, his father, uh, they, the family called him W.L., which is what I called him in the book. But W.L.'s father had always wanted to be a boxer, and he simply did not have the stature for it. He was, he was a rather short man and knew that he could not be uh, a heavyweight boxer. So he trained both his sons to do that. Uh, W.L., who they, the press took to calling young stripling, uh, was uh, in his first professional fight when he was 16 years old. His father got him out of school in Macon. He was in high school drove him to Atlanta, had a professional fight, he won, came back home, and was in school the next day. That's just, it, you know, that amazes me. And, and his younger brother, was it Herbert? Herbert. Or, Herbert was also reared to be yes, a boxer. Yes, he was. And, and, and he, although he didn't have the same degree of success as his brother, he was also a professional boxer. And uh, the two of them had fights all over the country several years in the late 20s and early 30s, W.L. was uh, made the list of the top tier of heavyweight contenders in the country. You know, he had amazing success. He also had amazing potential to be even more successful. Yes. And the book is aptly named The Champion That Never Was. Yeah. You want to explain that title? It was... Uh... It was very strange. It, it seems like every time he got close to a championship bout or in a championship bout, something happened that kept him from, from winning and attaining the title. Uh, once he, uh, he injured his hand, but he and his father didn't, and he injured it before the fight, but they didn't want to say anything. Yeah, because he was that kind of person. They were afraid. He never that, wanted to claim injury yeah. or that, that he wasn't giving his all in his fights or whatever. He had been, I think, judged unfairly by the, uh, the Northeastern press. And, of course, boxing in, in the 20s was centered in New York City. And they, uh, they said very unkind things about him early in his career, and he never forgot that. So whenever he was hurt or sick, and, and for one fight, uh, he, he was, I think he had bronchitis, and he was extremely ill, but they Another wouldn't tell anybody. Another time he had his teeth were infected. Or yeah, he had uh, a couple of uh, abscessed abscess teeth. He wouldn't say anything because later he and his father said, we were afraid they'd say that uh, we were using that as an excuse, so we, we didn't say anything. We didn't want the press to, to be able to say that about him. Well, what was amazing, too, though, and, you know, and I've read this book, and it's fascinating, but is that he had such success, though. I mean, when you look at the number of fights he had, how many he won, the very few that he lost, but it was always when a title fight was coming up. Yeah. And, and it's, it's when you read the whole book and you look back over it, it looks like it was just, he was fated to never it's, get that title. It seems that way. Yeah. And you're right, he had <coughs> a huge number of fights. I believe he had uh, 287 fights over 12 years, and he lost 12. Out of 287? Out of 287. Well, out of 299, I guess. Because he won 287. Oh, no, no, no he no. lost 12 out of 287. 287 <laughs> and lost only 12. And, and again, you know, it's, 
when you're reading the book and you know what the title means, every time though you're thinking, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one. Because they'll say he was in, you know, ready to go, he was in great shape, and then he hurt his hand or he started having stomach problems or, or whatever. It's funny you say that. I felt that way and I knew what was going to happen because I was writing it. But there was always this hope. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's there. And when you're out. reading it, you, you feel that way. You feel that hope. But I want, wanted to ask a, a quick question, too, and you and I haven't discussed this. But what did you think of the parents and their relationship with the sons? I think this was a classic case of two people living out their dreams through a through their child. Uh, his father, who the papers took to call him Pa, and they called his mother Ma. Pa and Ma. And yet they were only in their, their mid-thirties. Because they were so young when they, they were had They were so young when they had him. She was, they were both 16, I think, when he was born. And they, they both really believed they knew what was best. Had he been managed by someone other than his father and trained by someone other than his mother, I think his career would have been markedly different. Nobody in that day and time, or this day and time, fights that many fights. He would have five, six, eight matches a month. Uh, just, now what his father said was, well, this is his, how he likes to train. That may be true, but if you look at the, the great champions, nobody, well, nobody ever Well, Jack, you have that. the statistics that, that show how often the other right. contenders or right. fighters, you know, had a match. And then you put Young Stribling in there, and it was like, okay, they'd have one every six months, and he'd if have, that, and he'd have that. five a month or, right. or more. Right. But it's, and I think he was, he was overfought. Uh, before his title fight with uh, with Max Schmeling, I think he was seriously overtrained. Mm -hmm. But you know, the mo the the book is made to be a movie. I mean, if if you can't visualize that this would make a fantastic movie when you're reading it, I mean, he was from all the reports, he was stunningly handsome. Oh, you can look at the pictures; he yeah. was gorgeous. And there was there's a love story that's just amazing yep. in its depth. And then there's, and we won't tell what it is, but, and then there's the tragedy that comes mm -hmm. to the lives. I mean, you know, Hollywood, get on the phone, call this woman. This is just be a movie because it's, it's a great, great story that once again proves that truth is stranger and, and more interesting than fiction could ever be. Oh, I think so. As I said, it's not a boxing story. No. The boxing is there, but the real story is this man's life and the people that surrounded him, what he did. He traveled all over the world, uh, met any number of people. Well, let me tell you, this talented lady sitting here with me is amazing in how she has gotten all the information together and created a story that is true that reads like a novel. And that's meant in the most complimentary well, way. And I urge you, this is a book that you will enjoy. It makes a great gift. It's by Mercer University Press. And you, you need to get it. And Jackie, thank you so much for thank coming and talking so about much, it. Jackie. Because, man, this, this is a good book. And we want to again thank the Boras, right? Gail and Brandon of, of Byron, Georgia, for letting us take this interview in their home. And a special thanks to Jackie White. Thank you very much.